According to studies, 99% of American homes have 2.24 television sets. That means more American homes have TVs than indoor toilets. An average American spends 2,300 hours a year in front of a TV. That's over six hours a day, which makes TV the number two pastime in America, second only to sleep. Think about the family here. The average family member spends a measly 14 minutes of meaningful conversation with another family member in a day, while we spend six hours a day in front of a TV. When it comes to education, in one year, the average youth spends 900 hours going to school. But in that same year, we spend 1,500 hours watching TV. Are you comfortable with these numbers? Think about this. We all know that adolescence is a very complicated age, to say the least. As never before, the adolescent youth is aware of tremendous changes in his or her body and emotions. During this complex and critical time, there's a search, a search for identity, a search for role models. But more and more teenagers turn to television every day seeking for answers, and often they come away more confused with more twisted perceptions of reality than ever before. The bottom line is this. Teenagers are still developing, and so they face tremendous changes, confusion, stress. And anyone who is concerned for the well-being of youth must be aware of the major influences that hold sway over the shapeable hearts of young people today. Studies and statistics are clear. They reveal that television is one of those influences that must be reckoned with based on the amount of time a typical teen invests in television alone. Let me talk about the effects of TV. So watching TV generally drops during adolescence as young people start to spend more time socializing, doing schoolwork, and using other media such as music, video, video games, computers, and the internet. So watching TV is a relaxing activity, so they don't need to concentrate on much. So because uh, when they're bored, when they're alone, they tend to watch TV. This is how they get information about sex. 10% out of over 66% of TV shows contains a sexual um, content. The main focus of many dramas of for teens is sex. Um, they are generally not very clear about the consequences of having sex out of marriage. So in order to um, catch the attention of the teens, violence is more and more being used in AIDS, cartoons, movies, and so on. Violence is uh, presented, intelligence is distorted. People get comfortable with the violence not only due to the huge volumes of violence content being shown on television, but also because of the um, forms that, that is presented. The teenagers have been so used to violence on TV that are no, no longer shock them. This is a step-by-step -step process that uh, takes years, beginning with the um, child's total acceptance of the television as a companion, teachers, or babysitter. Since the childhood, the intimate relationship between TV and the teenagers is too close that they, they respect it as an um, authority. They begin to see boundary lines between right and wrong. This is the best way for, uh, for them to turn a drug dealer or a criminal into role models. And when these role models use violence to get what they want, it is perfectly acceptable for them. This issue is even um, worse for teenagers who already have emotional problems. Television is extremely fast-paced. In order to keep our attention, the scenes and camera angles are constantly changing. The average scene lasts between three and five seconds. And when it is something designed for young people, the changes are even faster. Brainwave researchers have shown that this is very hypnotic. While we are watching TV with such rapid changes, we are not reacting and filtering what's coming into our minds. We subconsciously accept and store whatever we are watching. So how can we tell if a program is having this effect on us? 
If the scene stays the same for 30 seconds to a minute, our brain is actually able to screen the content rather than simply accept it automatically. It's scary to think that it would come in subconsciously, so how can you tell if your TV viewing is addictive or not? First, keep a record of the amount of hours you spend watching TV during the week. Second, compare hours watching TV to the total hours of free time each week. If you spend the majority of your time watching TV, then you are addicted. The average person lives 75 years, sleeps about 8 hours a night, lives 50 waking years, watches 4 hours of TV each day. This is a 6 years of life spent in watching TV alone. How can you avoid this addicting tendency of TV? Switch the program off early in the first few minutes instead of watching it and waiting for it to get interesting. Make a list of more important or enjoyable things that you could be doing instead of watching TV. Don't just flip through the channels. Use a TV guide to look for beneficial programs to watch. But how could you know if it's a beneficial program or not? The Bible is clear. Philippians 4, 8, and 9 tells us, Whatever is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, and of good repute, if there is anything of excellence or worthy of praise, spend time on that, and God will be with you. Be critical about your TV viewing. Ask yourself, what value will I receive from watching this? Romans 12, 2 says, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God. We become what we watch. Isaiah 33, 14 to 16 tells us that he who stops his ears from hearing about bloodshed and shuts his eyes from looking upon evil will be able to live in God's presence. Before deciding to watch something, ask yourself, will this draw me closer to God? We have to remember that there is an enemy who is doing everything possible to destroy us. TV says you can have sex with so many, as, as many partners as you want. The Bible says only have sex with your wife. TV says date, have sex, move in together, and then think about marriage. The Bible says sex is a gift from God that can only be fully enjoyed in marriage. As Jesus told us in Luke 11, 34-36, the lamp of your body is your eye. When your eye is clear, your whole body also is full of light. But when it is bad, your body also is full of darkness. 1 John 2.15 says, If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Time is a gift from God. We should make the most of how we use it, and we should try our best to use it for the glory of God. Ellen White warned us about the dangers of media before it even became digital. There is no influence in our land more powerful to poison the imagination, to destroy religious impressions, and to blunt the relish for the tranquil pleasures and somber realities of life than the theatrical amusements. The love for these scenes increases with every indulgence. The ultimate question to ask ourselves, does this help me to know Jesus better? Will I be closer to God because I've watched this? In the end, that's really all that matters. TV, TV, free time, free time. TV, 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 free time. TV, 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 free. Have you done your list yet? Before turning on the TV, consider other fun things to do. Set a limit for your TV time and stick to your commitment. Try going exercising instead of watching TV. Think about not watching TV for a time. You'll find yourself talking to your family again. Find other hobbies to do like reading. Limit yourself to only watching television after accomplishing tasks at a set time. Limit your household to one television set. No TV at bedtime and while eating meals. Try rearranging your room to take the focus off the TV. You know, admitting that there is a problem is the first step to healing. Simple changes to your lifestyle by the power of the Holy Spirit can make a huge difference in the quality of your life. Hey, you may need to say no to TV and yes to life. Impossible? Be encouraged by the words of Jesus. With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. The good news is that our healing is found in Jesus. Without him, we can do nothing, but with him, we can do all things through him who gives us strength. 
Spend time each day with Jesus in his word. Talk to him in prayer. Enjoy his presence and ask him for the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray for discernment in what you watch and listen to. It is Christ dwelling in your heart that will give you the change you need. Let Philippians 4 8 be your guiding principle. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate, listen to, read, watch these things.